Hi, my name is Amy and welcome to Walkfiend Studios where chaos reigns. This is a quick video this week. I just want to show you how I do a quick grim dark cathedral base. Now this is the base for the Triumph of St. Catherine. I'm going to do a bigger video on just the general process of approaching a project like this soon. Uh, but for now I just want to focus on the base because I feel that there's a lot of techniques there that can be easily transferred to any other terrain. Whether it's another base or just terrain in general, it's very good for the Sector Imperialis scenery. But I feel like you could even transfer these to stuff like Age of Sigmar scenery. I started out spraying the whole base black and then picking out the central tiles in Wraithbone because I'm not very clever. If you're doing this, I recommend spraying in the lighter colour because otherwise you'll have to do about eight coats like I did. The next step is colouring all of those tiles. So I'm going to give them an all over coat of Nasdreg yellow contrast paint thinned with some contrast medium. I avoid the central circle as I plan to get some different colours in there. Then I use some apothecary white contrast paint straight from the pot on the centre part. I'm not too fussed about being too neat where they meet, as that will get fixed later. As with all of the steps I'm showing, you can pick and choose where you want these different colours depending on what terrain or bases you're painting. Now while those contrast paints are drying, I'm going to work on the parts that will be marble. I want a neutral brown marble so it doesn't draw too much focus, so I'm going to base it with Steel Legion Drab. Then I wash all of that marble with Null Oil. Whoops, that is Null Oil Gloss. No wonder the test patch I did was so shiny. Again, not very clever. Okay, so that's our base for the marble. Let's carry on with that now and come back to the tiles later. If you take a close look at this kind of brown marble in real life, you'll notice there are a lot of subtle hints of different colours in there. So we're going to start throwing paints at it. This is always a part I enjoy because you can be fairly messy with your paints. This helps give you a random effect. First I take Sons of Horus Green thin down until it's practically coloured water and just splash it around to stain some patches. You want it fairly transparent and subtle but don't be too worried about tide marks forming as they nicely replicate the look of real marble. After I'm done with the green I take some Doombull Brown and repeat the process. Finally some Deathclaw Brown in the same manner. Next, let's handle the characteristic streaky veins that really sell the marble effect. I take some Baylor Brown, thin down almost as much as the last coats, and I start to sketch in some branching lines. I try to keep them all in the same rough directions, as though the masons who laid down this floor were not just throwing blocks in anywhere, but paying attention to the grain. No need to make them too complex at this stage. After this I take some Vallejo Ice Yellow and I not only edge highlight all of the bricks but also work inside the lines of the veins I just sketched in, trying to make them a little more jagged and complicated. Finally to tie all this marble together I take some Scale 75 Chestnut Ink from their Ink Intensity range, thin it down and just coat all of the marble. OK, now to come back to the tiled section of the base. I take a large brush and dry brush the whole thing with more Wraith Bone. I build it up gently, trying to avoid too much streakiness, and I also don't want to go over the marble I've already done. Now I'm going to start adding some colour to this mosaic. Take some Ball Crimson by scale 75 and thin it down, painting it over in a transparent glaze. I want to do alternating sections of this central circle, 
but I also pick some other areas to fill in too. Next I take another scale 75 paint, their ink tents blue and now I'm going to pick out some other areas. The outer ring I paint in between the small fleur de lis which helps to cover the join between the yellow and white. These colours all look very bright and clashing right now but don't worry we'll fix them later. Next I take some Mechanica standard grey and paint the bricks around the edge of the mosaic. I take some elven gold and I fill in details like the letter I, the borders of the circle and some other random details here and there. Now I'm just going to splash Agrax Earthshade over all of the parts except the marble. This will dirty those bright colours down and tie them together, making them look worn and weathered. Another dry brush of Wraithbone will finish that weathering effect, making it look less of a multicoloured mess and more of a worn surface that was once beautiful but has seen a bit of battle since then. To finish off the base I pick out the rose petals in Mephiston Red. If you're painting anything other than this specific base you're probably not going to have these to do. I highlight them with first a 2 to 1 mix of Mephiston Red and Kislev Flesh. Then I add a bit more Kislev Flesh to get a 1 to 2 mix for a final highlight. Bring some more saturation and define the shadows with a wash of Caraber Crimson. Give the whole thing a matte coat and your grimdark cathedral base is done. Thanks very much for watching, catch all of you lovely soon, see ya!